Dennis Healy as Chancellor in the 1970s. He remains the one and only British politician who's had to go to the IMF with a begging bowl. The nightmare vision of bankrupt countries, the fate of Ireland, Greece, Portugal, 40 years later. I'm going to negotiate with the IMF. Britain was piled high with debt and the IMF insisted loans must be followed by £3 billion worth of public spending cuts. A civil war within the Labour Party was born. It means sticking to the very painful cuts in public expenditure on which the government's already decided. Dennis Healy was one of the last survivors of that generation of politicians who served on the front line in the Second World War. He was mentioned in dispatches, a tank commander at the Anzio beach landings, before going into politics, elected to Parliament in 1952. Dennis Healy was Defence Secretary, overseeing a massive end of empire reduction in British military presence east of Suez. He was on Labour's right, a combative Chancellor in Harold Wilson's second government, and under Jim Callaghan in a government that at times looked like it might be Labour's last. In opposition, when other right-wingers deserted Labour, Dennis Healy stayed, fought his corner and fought Tony Benn in an acrimonious battle for the deputy leadership. And I'll say this now, the votes have been counted three times. Tony Benn, 49.574. Dennis Healy, 50.426. Years later, Dennis Healy was asked what was his greatest political achievement. I think in some ways defeating Tony Benn for the deputy leadership by a hair of my eyebrow, because I, th I think if I hadn't, probably uh, there would have been a hemorrhage from the parliamentary party and uh, the Tories would have been in power for 30 years. Dennis Healy was a showman, always happy to do a turn for the cameras. <laughs> The memory I would like to leave when I move to another stage is really of somebody who can be quite serious about serious problems, make a speech on Star Wars or the international financial crisis one moment, and then that evening uh, maybe be a stand-up comic. <laughs> He was never to lead the Labour Party. He was an argumentative right-winger at a time when the right was painted as having failed. But for his admirers, the joker intellectual was the best prime minister the country never had.